I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and there are a ton of choices to choose from this holiday season. I keep saying that, but you know what? There are a ton of devices and I've got two more in my hand right now. One is the Motorola Droid Razor Max HD. It's a continuation of a very successful device that was released earlier in the year on Verizon Wireless. The Droid Razor Max, which packed a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. This is taking it to the next level with an HD display, Android 4.0 out of the gate, and a pretty nice revised version of Motorola's user interface. Then, you have the Samsung Galaxy S3 over here. Samsung sold over 30 million of these devices worldwide, and it's packing some pretty killer specs in the U.S. as well with a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.8-inch Super AMOLED HD display, and Android 4.0 with TouchWiz. Both have 4G LTE, both have some awesome specs all around. Which one's going to win in the dogfight? We'll find out, but first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like these for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we give to you on the site at instantwin.phonedog.com for free to boot. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working regardless of which device you get, the Droid Razor Max HD, the Galaxy S3, or any device this holiday season, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts and settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look. Razer Max HD, Galaxy S3, which one of these has the chops to be the ultimate Android smartphone, at least between these two devices? We'll find out starting right now. Well, hello, two more Android devices that are available on the market right now. They're both here. This is the Motorola Droid Razer Max HD. Now, if you remember the Razer Max from last year, this, actually from this year, this is taking it to the next level. It's packing a large battery, a 3,300 milliamp hour battery, just like the original Razer Max, but bringing some new specifications to the table, including a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU. So gone are the TIO map processors. It's got a 4.7-inch HD display, 720 by 1280 pixels over here, an 8-megapixel camera, a new design, kind of a new and improved design. It's a little bit more industrial all around, and this has Android 4.0 with Motorola's user interface. It's coming to Verizon, actually available right now on Verizon, for $299.99. So price tag wise, you know what, it's a little bit high, and in comparison to this one, you got this one on Verizon, and you have the Droid Razor HD on Verizon. Both have similar specifications. The biggest difference here, more storage space, 32 gigabytes here, as opposed to 16. And then, of course, that big battery. So you've got to decide, is that extra $100 worth spending for the big battery and for the added storage space? Then you have the iconic Samsung Galaxy S3 over here. Samsung's flagship device, over 30 million of these sold worldwide. This is Verizon's version. It is packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.7-inch display, an 8-megapixel camera here with 1080p HD video recording, a 2,100 milliamp hour battery, 4G LTE on both of these devices, and an Android 4.0 right now over here with Samsung's TouchWiz Nature user interface, their UX, uh, with nature-themed images and sounds, as you can tell, by the water ripples and more. So both of these uh, devices, very exciting, here for the holiday season. This one's a little bit older. This one came out in May. This one's a little bit newer. Came out, I believe, in September, if I remember right, or announced in September. Retail availability is always a little bit different with both of these devices. That said, two hot devices on Verizon. This is available at Verizon for $199.99. Packs 16 gigabytes of internal memory, and uh, there is a 32 gigabyte version floating around out there uh, that I can't remember off the top of my head if Verizon's still selling it. If they are, it's $199 for the 16 gigabyte version, $249.99 for the 32 gigabyte version, assuming they have it in stock. So, you know, in terms of what you like, user interfaces aside, they're both running Android 4.0, and design-wise, they're both pretty different as well. And the Motorola device, the Droid Razor Max HD, you've got a power button, a volume rocker over here, and take a look at the design difference here versus something like the original Droid Razor or the original Droid Razor Max. And you can see some design differences all around. It's a little bit more industrial looking. Kevlar back here, still on the back, Gorilla Glass in the front, on-screen buttons, as you can see here, micro USB charging port, micro HDMI port, you got your SIM card slot right here, and then you got, like I said, volume rocker and power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and a really nice design theme all around with the camera on the back, and then of course your flash as well. Over here, volume rocker, typical Samsung look and feel, very plasticky. It's either a love or a hate thing. Some people love it because they feel like it's more sturdy as opposed to something like the Apple iPhone 5, a little bit, you know, has metal, has glass, easier to break. This may or may not be easier to break thanks to the fact that it's plastic. That said, you know, it's inspired, according to Samsung, by Pebble. It's got kind of that nature look and feel, at least that's what they want you to think that it does. 
8 megapixel camera on the back, speaker on the back, you've got your 2100 milliamp hour battery here, 4G LTE as you can see there, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, micro USB charging port at the bottom. This is available on Verizon in blue, white, brown, and black. The brown and black versions are only available online as of right now. So design-wise, a little bit different here. In terms of uh, overall size, you got 0.34 inches thick here, 0.37 inches thick here. So even though this has an added battery, a 3,300 milliamp hour battery, you don't have to worry about it being too much thicker than the Samsung Galaxy S3. That said, let's take a look at the interfaces here and see some of the differences on both of these devices. First of all, you do get some Verizon pre-installed applications. And it's funny because obviously you can see the implementation of the various manufacturers use your interfaces. For example, apps and widgets, the color themes look a little bit different. The wallpaper on the background on the uh, TouchWiz device, the Samsung device looks different than this, which is all black. I scroll over, I immediately go into my widgets over here. Between this, I just scroll back and forth between apps and I have to physically click to go up into widgets. So you can see some differences on both of these devices. And of course you have a favorites folder over here as well. So you can put your favorite applications in and really make this device your own. So both of these offer great personalization choices, but we'll get into that in just a second. What I want to show you are the applications, not messaging, applications. Let's go in here and take a look and see what comes out of the gate. Vcast apps pre-installed on both of these devices. You've got MC3 over here. You've got Google Plus integration, mobile hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, NFL Mobile. You've got Real Racing 2. And let's see, Smart Actions, which we'll talk about in part two of the video. Voicemail, VZ Navigator, Verizon Video, Vcast Tones, and more on the Verizon side over there. Over here, you got Vcast apps, you've got guided tours, let's see, mobile hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, Play, Google Play integration, of course, VZ Navigator, Visual Voicemail, which on both of these devices is available for an additional $2.99 per month, and then some applications that I've installed, Yelp, I've installed Weather Channel, Speed Test, uh, and more. So Verizon applications, or Verizon bloatware, if you will, on both of these devices, unfortunately, you can't remove those, so you are stuck with uh, whatever Verizon stuff comes pre-installed on both devices. Now Motorola has changed around their user interface ever so slightly. When you pinch out here, for example, you're gonna see the typical thing that we've seen with past Android 4.0 devices, and even back in Gingerbread as well. You pinch out, you see your seven home screens over here, kind of in this format, just like this with your home screen being in the middle. Over here, a little bit different. I'm gonna add some pages, I'm gonna manage, I'm gonna keep adding blank page. Let's go ahead and add another blank page. Let's go ahead and add another blank page, whoops. Let's do media, whatever that works. Add another blank page. Add another blank page. So as you can see, the implementation of the added home screen is a little bit different over here. I don't really care for the overall functionality of this. Page limit is now reached. So I'll zoom back out and see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total home screens here. Unfortunately, if you want to make this your home screen, for example, you can't go over here and put it in the middle and then click home because it takes you back to the one on the furthest, the one rather that's the furthest left and closest to the quick setting. So that said, if you're like me, you like your home screen right in the middle. It's a little OCD thing, but if you're somebody that likes Android a lot, you're gonna notice these things because this is a fundamental shift in terms of Android over on this device uh, on the Razer Max HD. That said, some people may love it, some people may hate it, some people may not care. It's just something I pointed out and noticed uh, out of the gate when I was working with this device. So let's take a look at text messaging as well. And you can see here, you got your keyboards, Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, Samsung's keyboard over here on this device, and you've got a couple of different keyboard choices on both units. You've got Motorola Chinese input over here along with Swipe, and then over here, you've got Google Voice typing, and that's about it. Now, Samsung's solution comes with a built-in swipe, as you can see. Hey there. I'm trying to do this uh, from an angle, and it's not working too, uh, too well. The Quick Brown Fox. B-R-O-W-N-F-O-X, as you can see there. And then, of course, Motorola's user interface, or Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, rather, here. I've always been a fan of this keyboard, and both of these displays are going to be large enough to type on. 4.7 inches over here, 4.8 inches over on the Galaxy S3. Portrait to landscape transitions reasonably fast. Thanks to a really nice, speedy 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU on both of these devices. So they both perform incredibly well, and you can, of course, hunt and peck on the Samsung keyboard if you see fit. It is almost, it's almost five o'clock. Quick Run Fox is happy it's almost five o'clock. Then of course over here, almost five o'clock. Just do it like that for example. Quick Run Fox is happy that it's almost five o'clock. Of course some spelling errors 
there as well. But one thing you'll notice on the Droid Razor Max HD, if you're an Android purist, you're one of those Android enthusiasts, you like to hack and root your device, you're going to really notice that Motorola is getting closer and closer with every iteration of their custom user interface. Ironically, they're getting closer and closer to stock Android, as you can see here. Not a whole lot of interface influence in the notifications bar, in various applications. Of course, you see some custom Motorola widgets, but here it looks very similar to stock Android 4.0 or, uh, Android 4 or Ice Cream Sandwich. Very similar to the overall look and feel of the stock build. So if you're somebody that likes a stock version of Android, this may be an ultimate device for you. If you're somebody like me that thinks, you know what, for the mainstream consumer, Android 4.0 or 4.1 still isn't that ideal. I think there's some better options out there. TouchWiz being one of them. For anybody like a first-time smartphone buyer or even my mom or my dad, somebody that's not as necessarily as uh, techy as I am, I recommend something like TouchWiz or Sense because of the influence and because of the interface and because of the ecosystem, honestly, within both interfaces. Sense and TouchWiz, they're well-developed, they're mature enough, they both have great ecosystems within themselves. So great Samsung applications, great features over here on the Galaxy S3, for example, with uh, stuff like TouchWiz, or uh, stuff on TouchWiz, rather. As you can see, we'll go in here, for example, go to Motion. You got some motion activation. I can do some really cool things with motion activation, like direct call. I can call the contract currently displayed or smart alert. So whenever I pick up the phone, it vibrates. If I have a text message or something of that nature, I can pan to move icon. There's just a lot of cool features here on this device. And when you get into this kind of nitty gritty of devices and you realize, you know what, specs wise, these really aren't that far apart. They both have eight megapixel cameras. They both have dual core processors. They both have HD displays. You've really got to distinguish yourself with software. And that is something that I know I talk about this in every video video, but it's something, especially as you go into this holiday season and you see a bunch of devices on retail shelves with the exact same specifications, it's going to be all about the software. And I think that's an area where the Galaxy S3 really distinguishes itself amongst the, comp uh, the competition, rather, is in the software. Take a look, for example, the LED indicator, you can do low battery. And of course, my favorite, you can put a custom uh, battery percentage up there so you can actually see, hey, I have 88% instead of this little arbitrary meter up here, which I don't know how much I have. And yes, to those people that are getting ready to say what I know you're going to say, I know that the widget here has 97 or a battery indicator within the widget. But that said, it's a widget. I can download widgets over here. I like the fact that this is built into the system. And this, they have it. LG has it. Uh, and it's really impressive to me where I can do that as opposed to having to work with a widget like Battery Life by Curvefish or Circles on the Motorola devices. Really enjoy that feature out of the gate. Other stuff includes the lock screen. We'll come down here and take a look at security. And you've got your screen lock. But then you've got some lock screen options here where I can set my information ticker, my camera quick access. A lot of cool little software features. So when I turn it off and back on and I get to my lock screen, I can press and hold and move the display like that and easily access my camera. So really impressive all around on the software front there. That said, somebody that really likes stock Android is going to be really impressed with the Motorola Droid Razor Max HD. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk about battery life. We'll talk about internet browsing, speed tests, and more. It's going to be a crazy dogfight. So come back and see me, won't you?